Hello, hello everyone. Hope you are doing well. Today we have Dr. Teresa with us. Um, she's no stranger to the Healthy Wave Vibes. She's going to be talking about balancing weight, which is a very, very interesting topic and a very hot topic. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm Fatima. Uh, I'm sure you're seeing that there's only one of us today. Um, everyone's on training, but that's okay. The show will go on. Um, and so with Dr. Teresa, she is a certified fun functional med medicine chiropractic physician whose life purpose is to help solve pati patient's health issues through balancing their biochemistry and natural compounds, such as herbs, vitamins, minerals, neurotransmitters, bioidentical hormones, chelators, binders, phytonutrients, etc. That's a mouthful. She focuses on advanced testing procedure and extensive health history to create an effective treatment plan for her patients. She was a research scientist as a pharmaceutical company, has dealt with her own past significant health challenges that only her that only improved through natural means, raised two beautiful young women and is the owner and director of Health Up Institute recently name change from Health Up Wellness Center since 2011, an active lecturer, educator on many health topics, and an international speaker on iodine therapy. It's a vital role in our health and healing. Besides her chiropractic do doctorate degree, she has a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry and a Master's of Science in Environmental and Industrial Health from the University of Michigan. She is a lifelong learner with an open mind of combining science with energy medicine. She has also been trained as a Reiki master teacher and yoga instructor. Hello, Dr. Teresa. Hi, well, thank you for having me today. And uh, as you said, um, our weight is a very uh, sensitive topic and a very important topic. I can't tell you how many patients I have come in and we want to check their health stats and they will literally ask for them not to be weighed. And I can, I, I can understand that, but it's, it's very important to know or to get an idea of. However, the number on the scale is not what defines our health and that's what we need to understand. It is an aspect of our health and that's what I really want to go in depth today about. When I was thinking about weight balancing, and that's the key here, not a particular goal weight for you, because depending on your age, your body type, your size, that, that weight, you know, um, range is, is pretty big. And to be healthy, you could be in, a, in a, that many different parts of it. So kind of like a big pyramid, when I was writing this out, my, my scientific mind drawing structures, and the top of the pyramid is you being at your healthy weight, your balanced weight. And what does that mean? How do we get there? So to me, the very bottom structure of the pyramid that's going to help you be consistently there, happy and healthy, is really starting with the mind, you know, understanding where your stress is coming from. We're going to talk a little bit more about these things, uh, focusing on how your body feels and your daily positive health choices. But then the next aspect is not, again, the scale. It is really different health statistics that reflect your true health. So we're going to go through those health statistics. And then there's kind of two other blocks before hitting that top of that pyramid of that long term success. And often it is hitting plateaus. And there's different reasons why we hit plateaus. And we're going to talk about that. And then the other one is medical roadblocks. There are true medical roadblocks that exist that if you don't address those, you're just going to keep be spinning your wheels, getting frustrated, and then often, of course, regaining that weight. And we know that 80% of the people who lose weight, because often the goal is just weight loss, they gain it back. And, and we, that's the last thing we want. We know that yo-yo dieting, it puts you at a lot higher risk of one, lowering your metabolism, storing additional fat more efficiently. Your, your body rises up to this little game that we play. It's like, ah, oh, you're going to starve me again for a while. So now when you eat again, it, just, it works better. It's, it's ironic that it's smarter and it actually works better. So 
before I start, I want to, did you have any other questions after I went through that? Well, it's interesting that you say like you're using it as a pyramid, right? Like we've got the Maslow's hierarchy. Um, and if you look at it, everything is sort of in a pyramid. There's different steps to, to achieve our, our goals, right? And everything's okay. done in a pyramid. And it, it's interesting that, you know, you're saying that the weight on the scale doesn't or that number on the scale doesn't matter because a lot of times people are that's the first thing it's like okay so i'm 150 pounds at you know such and such height i have to be like i have to be 105 right well yeah, that's crazy is that really crazy. idealistic or is that just is that a number to get you to go crazy um it is to me that is absolutely uh, putting a, a number as our health goal is crazy. It's a part of the puzzle of, yes, of course, if we are 200 pounds and we are five foot tall, we have some weight to lose to have the other health statistical markers be where they're supposed to be because it will reflect in there. So, of course, we need to lose weight for various health reasons, but that is not what we establish as what makes us happy and healthy. So. In, in achieving that, in, in setting one, like you're pointing out, setting the right goals, which kind of jumps into the, having the right health statistics. So that's kind of that next, that next layer. Mm -hmm. So that next layer, many people, um, and I know you and I were talking earlier, think of body mass index. And that's very common. And you can look it up online and do your height and your weight and put it in a little calculation and you'll get this number. And you're going to be classified as uh, you know, your average weight or overweight or obese. And the body mass index is challenging because it's not always or not often even reflective of our health. Yeah. Many people can be in the overweight status who are very healthy, athletic, muscular, or they have a larger frame with just natural larger muscles on them. And some athletes actually fall into the obese range. So that's not good. What we want to look at is there's six strong medical statistics we should look at. And I, I think of it, there's actually like nine overall. So one of those first ones is your waist to your hip ratio. So you might've heard this before, but that is very important in determining risk factors for heart disease, for um, increased blood pressure, increased you know, cholesterol, which are actually other markers. So your waist to hip ratio, you're going to want to measure around your waist. You know, the, the, you want to find the point between your lowest rib and the top of your hip, get that measurement. Then you go to your hip and you want to find the widest part on your hip. You know, people want to, you know, estimate us. No, you want the widest number. Trust me, that actually make it look better. But you want the widest number on your hips and you divide the waist by the hip. And women need to be below 0.85 and men below 0.9 because men are definitely much more straighter. I just, order, we were just I was just reading that in my textbook. So this is great. Yes, yes. And it's a very simple measurement to do. And I've had patients who their body mass index, like a healthy, healthy range is supposed to be like, I say 16. There's some that say 15, but 16 to 24.9. And you could be at 20, which you think, woohoo. But just stick arms and stick legs and this huge apple of a body, which is indicative of some medical roadblocks that we can talk about, adrenal fatigue and liver issues. And so her waist to hip ratio was horrendous, even though her weight looked great. So that's why you got to be very careful. The weight is, is a number that, yes, we want to be in a range, but if these other markers are not in healthy ranges, these markers are more important. So the next one is your blood pressure. You know, what is your blood pressure? Ideally less than 120 over 80. It can go up a little bit as we age, 130, you know, over 85, you know, that, that's subjective. But medically they say 120 over 80 or below. And as long as you're maintaining it there, you're having that part of your health in place. So with these it's, tests or, or these markers, is this something that we need to go get done um, professionally by a doctor, or can we do some of these at home ourselves? I mean, the hip to waist ratio, obviously oh, yeah. we, can, we can do ourselves. I mean, the blood yeah. pressure, as long as we've got, um, the, the, 
Oh, you can get it free in like one of your pharmaceutical stores. Yes. You know, here, Walgreens, CVS, and you know, I'm not sure in Canada if it's the same. But yeah, so you can either have your own blood pressure cuff or go get it done for free. And actually of all the markers, um, just two of them, uh, you need a blood draw. So the other ones with the blood draw is your blood sugar levels. Mm -hmm. You want to know one, what your glucose is. That's the simple one, but also something called your hemoglobin A1C. That is talking about how uh, sugar coated your blood cells are. So you don't want sugar coated blood cells because it makes them rigid. They can't get into small areas like the eyes or your extremities. And that's why when people have diabetes, they can lose their sight. Uh, they lose their digits, you know, so it's very important to know what that number is. Do you want it to be less than 5.7? You know, so if you're listening and taking notes and want to know them, you want that less than 5.7. If you're between the 5.7 and 6.4, it's pre-diabetic. And if it's above that, hopefully you have this blood drawn through a doctor, but yet some places you can draw your blood or get your blood drawn on your own. If you have a number in that range or above, you really need to, you know, seek some assistance to get this down. And then the other part of your blood draw is your cholesterol levels. So those are two of the things that your hemoglobin A1C or glucose and cholesterol levels are very important to understand that they're in healthy ranges. And for cholesterol, on average, you want it less than 200. But what's more important is your um, cholesterol ratio to your high density cholesterol. Um, and looking at your LDLs, that can get a little bit more complicated so that's something worth discussing with a medical professional. But when you're on your weight loss journey and trying to hit that goal of weight balancing, finding out what weight works good, not just what acts on the scale, these are markers you want in place. Having a healthy cholesterol, having a healthy hemoglobin A1C, knowing what your blood pressure is, then a couple other measurements are your resting heart rate that you can check on your own. You can just... Look at your watch. You can do two ways. Uh, count for 15 seconds and times that number by four or count for a full minute. <laughs> you know? So unless you have some type of uh, Fitbit or something that is tracking it for you, you can do it manually just by finding your pulse on your wrist and counting it. A resting heart rate between 60 and 100 is considered normal. Ideally, you know, less than 80 would be good. But even 80 to 90 and 90 to 100, depending on the situation, um, is not necessarily horrendous. But 90 to 100, I, I call that the orange zone. When you're over 100, if you check and you're over 100 and you didn't just get done running <laughs> or, you know, you've been sitting at your desk, check it again, like in a half hour, an hour. That is dangerous. It's called tachycardia. If you're finding your pulse is high, you again, you can have a perfect, what you call perfect weight and body mass index, but your heart rate is high, you need to contact your doctor. The other one is what's called heart recovery rate. And this is really important because having a healthy heart recovery rate significantly reduces your risk of atrial fibrillation, of heart disease, of other heart issues as you age and at that time. So simply put, your heart recovery rate is how quickly your heart rate decreases two minutes after you're exercising. So you elevate it to a really good, you know, unless you get it 150 and then you stop, walk around, don't ever just stop and stand still. <laughs> People can feel sick when they do that, but you can just gently kind of walk around. And after two minutes, you take that again. And you want to see a drop of 22 to 52 heart rate points down. You need at least 12. If you don't have at least 12 down, there's like a serious heart issue, please go immediately. But even if it's less than 22, there's some work to be done. So those are important. So those are your medical markers. Um, your waist to hip ratio, I consider that medical. Your blood sugar, hemoglobin A1C, your blood pressure, your resting heart rate, heart rate recovery, and cholesterol. Other ones, your pain or inflammation markers. So again, you're trying to achieve this healthy weight. On your way to it, we get very frustrated that we don't hit certain numbers. You need to be looking at these other markers. Has your pain gone down? Has the stiffness when you wake up in the morning gone down? Has like dry skin or psoriasis improved? These are all different pain and inflammatory markers. And there are some on blood work, C-reactive protein and sedimentation rate that can also be checked 
and compared. These all show important progress. Other personal ones, your energy level, has it improved? Your mood, has it gotten better? Um, you know, I know next month we're going to talk about depression, anxiety. It's a mental health month. That is a key marker for our overall health and part of balancing your weight. And also your mind has your, your memory and focus improved. So those are all markers. Then in that second part of the pyramid, we should be looking at that in order to eventually be happy with our weight balancing. That's interesting that you say that. I mean, that's, those are a lot of different indicators, but oftentimes, you know, we forget that, okay, there's more to just weight loss than that, you know, that, that number or fitting into that dress, but really it's how do we feel? How do our bones feel? How do our joints feel? You know, like you mentioned, what is our cognitive function? Um, so I don't know if you know, um, but I've been on a health weight loss journey myself and I pretty much cut out gluten because I'm gluten intolerant. And I've already, since January, I've lost 32 pounds. Hey, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and so it's, it's definitely been a journey. Like I know that I'm not going to lose like, you know, 50 pounds overnight and nor do I want to do that because that's not healthy. Right. But I've been exactly. at it, you know, and I, I've definitely seen a shift in, in my mood. Um, I've seen a shift in my energy level. I've seen a shift in my memory. I'm not getting headaches anymore because the gluten was just causing a lot of, you know, issues. So and everything that you've, you've just mentioned, Dr. Teresa, it makes a lot of sense. Like, you know, a lot of times we forget to look at the external markers that are also internal. Exactly. And of and course I can fit into those outfits again that's like the best part. yes that's a wonderful external marker and do our clothes yeah. fit better truly that's motivating for most of us yeah um but you mentioned a really good thing that even before i talk about these other aspects is taking out gluten and therefore does that mean is there a particular diet you know that works best to do all this and this particular talk we're not going to go in much detail about diet today because again finding out why you are reaching a plateau or what medical roadblocks you might have can pinpoint a more specific diet plan whether through a functional medicine doctor or health coach or a nutritionist so the diet is very important but in general there's some universal things that people can do that can't hurt you and can only help you and down the road you can think of it as Maybe it'll come back in down the road, so it's not a never forever type thing, but removing gluten from your diet, which is in many grains, you know, wheat, barley, rye, um, removing corn, corn be very inflammatory, um, removing dairy for some people. Uh, the other top ones are soy and eggs, but, um, you know, a lot of people are like, oh my God, I live on eggs. Just remove one thing that you think might be bothering you. And I actually agree that gluten is one of the number one just inflammatory processes that happen in our body. You do not have to be allergic to it. You do not have to have celiac disease, but it's very difficult to digest. And therefore it requires one, a lot of energy. So if you ever feel tired after eating, there's probably excess amount of gluten or carbs in there. Um, and it, it can inhibit the energy needed for other nutrient absorption, which can help, you know, it's a chain effect. So, you know, basically that, of course, you know, if you look at your plate, you've probably heard this before, um, vegetables, 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 half of every meal should be vegetables. And we do need to eat, you know, people avoiding to eat all the time, it's not good. And then uh, protein, high quality protein, and then maybe a little bit of carbohydrates, depending again on people's situations. So that's, you know, very little bit of explanation of diet, but um, it is a part of the puzzle. And usually you, you need guidance or you might be following a particular way. But no matter what diet you follow, if you don't have these other aspects in play, again, that base of the pyramid, having the right mindset, being very patient with yourself, you made a great comment of it's not going to happen overnight. No way. It's no. been, you know, people think, well, it's been months. No, it's not. It's been years. It's been years and years of whatever, maybe a roadblock's been going on like uh, uh, medical issues that like we're talking about hypothyroidism, adrenal fatigue, hormone imbalances. I'll bring that back up again, but that could have been going on for a long time. It could have been uh, just 
stress, uncontrolled stress. So there's just a little bit of increased caloric intake. I mean, most people, when we've gained weight or are overweight, it's not like we're just people who just pig out all the time. It's just been a slow process of just imagine, on average, Americans, Americans alone, I mean, it could be different around the world. A healthy American, two pounds a year, just two pounds a year, which think, ah, oh, no big deal. Oh my gosh, from age 30 to 40, you know, that's 10 pounds. But two pounds, come on, it's more like five to 10 pounds <laughs> for most of you. You know, every year, that's 10, 20, 30, 40. You know, and even if it's five pounds, that's just crazy amount of mm-hmm. extra weight that has happened over five, 10 years plus. So making those small habit changes because your goal is, okay, over this year and next year, you're going to achieve a better, healthier mind, body, spirit self as you go in order to be healthy for the rest of your life. So that's really important. So understanding where your stress comes from, who's causing that stress is very important and dealing with that aspect as part of that base pyramid, you know, connecting to how your body feels. And I think you mentioned that. So really, um, whether you're eating certain foods, how your body feels or in certain situations, how your body feels, that's going to help you alter your habits. And you can have a whole nother long discussion on how to change your habits over time. But small and one at a time is always the most important way. Um, And then, of course, looking at those other health stats. So the main, like, issue that everybody says is, okay, I'm doing all those things. My health stats look great. My blood pressure is great. My blood sugar is great. Um, you know, I'm eating healthy. I've been doing these diets for years that are healthy. They're not no yo-yo dieting, but yet there is 20 to 40 to 50 pounds that won't move. That's common. Don't beat yourself over it. There must be something else. And that's when you've got to go, okay, you know, I'm meditating. I'm doing my gentle exercising. I'm doing my weight training. I'm doing everything. Those have to be in place. So once those are in place, now what's next? Okay, medical blocks, roadblocks could be happening or, you know, you're, you're just on a plateau and you need something to shake it up. So the medical roadblocks, men and women, can be dealing with hypothyroidism. It's more common in women and actually what's called subclinical hypothyroidism. It just hurts me so much when women say, my blood work looks great, but I, I feel tired, exhausted, my hair is falling out, you know, my nails are brutal, I have fatigue, I have brain fog. And TSH, which is a marker, is one thing to look at, but they don't look at what's going on with their ranges, with how those hormones are functioning in the body. And you take a look at that and you're like, um, no, you're really hypothyroid. You're, it's called subclinical hypothyroid. Subclinical, because that clinical range is actually for super sick people. I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> but you feel crummy and you can't get rid of weight, you could be in what's called subclinical range. It has to be looked at and dealt with. You could have adrenal fatigue or an adrenal hormone imbalance, and there's tests that can be done to look at that. And that occurs from long-term stress, <laughs> which is generally most of our lives. You know, you can have hormone imbalances at every stage. So men, much more straightforward. Their hormones are more consistent, but of course it changes over time. They get more estrogen as they age, testosterone goes down, and that is a recipe for weight gain and difficulty for weight loss. Mm -hmm. Women, who seems to be the one more focused on this, in every hormonal stage we're in, there's issues. Sadly, there's issues. A cycling woman could have poor ratios with their estrogen to progesterone, not enough progesterone. They could be dealing with polycystic ovarian syndrome, endometriosis, all these other issues. Then we've got, you move that into perimenopause. Those issues don't go away. They actually get worse in perimenopause. So as your body starts shutting down before menopause, woo, it's just haywire. The hot flashes, significant weight gain. You thought it was hard to lose weight before. If you don't balance your hormones then, you're really in for a major show. (laughs) I don't want to say what kind of show it is, but it's bad. Yeah, I totally agree there. Anything you do, you can't get that weight off. And then you go into menopause. So these women will reach menopause, already have gained. 10 is a nice number. I mean, literally 30, 40, 50 pounds through their perimenopause stage that they had. They do do not understand why. They they tried their best and it's on. And now it's stuck in menopause. And so there's a lot you've got to do. You have to balance your hormones. 
Of course, besides good diet and good exercise, but all the good hormones are stronger than diet. I say that all the time. It's, it's very hard to win against imbalanced hormones. I totally agree with you, Dr. Teresa. Like, I oh, mean, yeah. myself, like I've always been fairly healthy, you know, very like mindful of what I eat, very active. I could, I had a very fast metabolism. And then like 35, it was like overnight, I put on all this weight and I'm like, I haven't changed my diet. I haven't done anything different and still active, but my hypothyroidism kicked in. It was perimenopausal and everything just went, like you said, haywire. And it wasn't until I actually, you know, started doing the case study on myself for my nutritional program that I actually understood what was going on. And by making the simple adjustments, you know, like increasing the iodine, as Dr. Teresa has mentioned a few times over the show to help with hypothyroidism, well, and cutting out the gluten and adding um, lemon and water. Um, so I drink a lot of water. I'm sure you guys have noticed that. But lemon and like ginger to my water. Well, guess what? All of a sudden, everything yeah. has shifted. And I haven't changed my diet per se. But just because those three things I've shifted, my weight has come down. I've started balance. Like my thyroid is not like acting crazy on me my other hormones have started balancing out my like so it's it's really interesting that you say that that the hormones are yeah. the power behind our weight absolutely and it was interesting as i'm listening to you and you mentioned on some key points your case study on yourself is what everybody needs to do they need to put themselves under a microscope even i had to do this myself i went through all this so i can speak from experience and we don't want to, we avoid it. You need to do that because then you're going to start identifying these weak areas or these habits or things that you're letting slide. But I also was going to bring up iodine. So before we were done, I'm like, I got to bring up the iodine aspect because without having iodine, which is what your thyroid hormone is made from, and we are told that there is not an iodine deficiency in our society. And through blood work, direct blood work, you can often see this. And there shouldn't be, but there is. And then through a 24-hour uh, urine spot and load test, nearly everybody has iodine deficiency issues. And we don't realize that iodine is needed for all our hormones, not just thyroid hormone, and it's needed for our immune system. So our endocrine system, our immune system, and every cell in our body has a receptor site for it. So it's a big piece of the puzzle that we all have to put together. But if you don't have that piece balanced, your hormones as well won't, you know, get back to where they're supposed to. So as you know, being an iodine researcher, and I work with, you know, my patients on their hormones, that is always done in parallel. We always have to look at their iodine and, and balance that in parallel to what else is going on. Otherwise, yeah, it's not going to happen. And before we're done, so, so this is the medical roadblock. I need to mention uh, environmental toxins. Also, uh, it is, we are just in a pool of toxins that are obesogens, you know, our phthalates and our PFOS, you know, OFs, I'm gonna say it wrong, PFOS, which are like in our pans and our plastics, you know, just tons, I mean, just go on and on. Go to environmentalworkinggroup.org and, you know, look at your products that you use on your face, look at the products, you know, that you're wearing on your body, that you're cooking with, that you're drinking, you know, how to cans, the BPA, they're actually in line to cans, all those things, they're all obesogenic and there's lots of studies on it, which means they lead your body into storing more fat and they actually lower your metabolism, which is a double horrible whammy. So that's more that medical side. The uh, plateaus, I want to briefly mention, if you are hitting this plateau, everything else feels like it's in place. Maybe you're working on your roadblocks but you just can't get past it, you know, you're like, okay, I got 20 more pounds and I can't break it. You know what? Maybe you do need to, you know, seek out a health coach or uh, maybe some counseling or therapy because there actually could be some emotional issues behind it. There could be other things behind it. Acupuncture can be very helpful. Um, hypnotherapy can be helpful. Homeopathy can be helpful. Weight loss is extremely complicated. There's those physical aspects we were talking about, which are very important but there's a whole mental aspect that can also block us from not getting to that final pyramid. 
and that will often plateau us because we do everything great and then we just hit this crazy plateau. So seeking help, no matter who you are, you could be your own specialist. Maybe you're your own health coach, but you'll hit a plateau because sometimes we, we can't see our own stuff or we know it, but we, everybody needs a mentor. Everybody needs a mentor. So I just wanted to throw that out there. And I think we have one more item on the pyramid before we actually come to an end. <laughs> And the top, the top yeah. of the pyramid, the top of the pyramid is achieving your weight balancing, you know, and the weight balancing is exactly that. The scale tips a little back and forth normally. So it's all about, okay, where do you, what's healthy for you? Is 160 healthy? Is 140 healthy? Well, you're, it's not going to be there. It's actually going to be, you know, maybe 157 to 162. It's a weight balance. But in staying in a range that you achieve all these other uh, goals with, good blood sugar, good blood pressure, you know, uh, good cholesterol, great heart rate, your mood is great, your attitude's great, your energy level's great, okay, then you can balance your weight and find that happy range, and that's what we're all going for. Wow, that was amazing. Um, not enough time, definitely not enough time to cover everything that we want to cover, but Again, if you have any questions, please let us know. And if you do need to, please do consult with your, your GP or your practitioner um, for any other advice. Um, this is just um, educational. Um, again, so thank you again, Dr. Teresa, for coming on. That was very informative and time goes by way too fast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, reach out. Reach out to me. Reach out to your health professional or health coach to you know, get to that weight balancing. Everybody can achieve it. All right, um, so we have started um, another round of Gratitude 1000. So we are at day three, which is really exciting. Um, so we're gonna switch it up just a little bit to make it a little bit more interesting. If you can add one picture or two, to your post, whether you post it on Facebook or on Instagram, but make sure you take us. You want to have your 10 gratitudes, 10 different gratitudes and a picture to go with it, to make it a little bit more interesting. Um, yeah, we'd love to have you on board again. If you're not following us, please follow us. We are the healthy way vibes on all platforms coming up next on May 18th. We've got Dr. Teresa coming in again, and she's going to be talking about depression and anxiety again. So if you have any questions regarding depression or anxiety, and you'd like answered, please let us know. Thank you for tuning in and have a wonderful day. Bye for now.